Hello, I'm Amanda Shagney, Associate Director for UK Alumni Career Services, and today I'm joined by UK alumnus Dr. Michael Wong. Welcome, Dr. Mike. We're grateful to host you today for Career Conversations. Well, thank you, Amanda. It's really my pleasure to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about your career path since you graduated from UK. Well, I've had a pretty straightforward path. Actually, I graduated as a chemistry major in the College of Arts and Sciences in 1989, but I knew I wanted to be a doctor. So I actually stayed around UK for four more years and attended medical school and graduated for the second time from UK in 1993. After that, I did a three-year residency uh, in internal medicine at Vanderbilt. Um, after my residency, I came back to Lexington and joined the faculty at UK. And I was uh, what they call a clinical title series professor. So I did mostly patient care. I did a little bit of teaching, but didn't really have research responsibilities. I ended up becoming an associate professor and eventually became the medical director of the primary care clinic at Kentucky Clinic South, which is a standalone satellite clinic out Harrodsburg Road. All in all, I spent 17 years at UK and, and I really, really enjoyed my time there. But in 2013, I made a change. So I've really only had two jobs since finishing my residency 25 years ago. Now I work for Marathon Health, which is a national company uh, provider of workplace healthcare solutions and population health management. Basically, what they do is they run workplace health centers for large employer groups across the country. So currently I'm the medical director of the Dr. Samuel Brown Health Center, which is run by Marathon Health for the city of Lexington, the city government. And all my patients are the city employees and their family members that are on the city health plan. So it's a it's really a great job for me at this stage in my career. I don't have any hospital works, no, no after hours call, you know, pretty much normal hours and most of my weekends are free although I do work Saturday mornings until noon. Um, I do work really closely with the city and the mayor's office to keep the city workers. So you're talking all the police officers, the firefighters, the waste management people, sewer workers, you know, uh, everybody healthy. Uh, it's really a win-win-win in my book. I think the patients, the city employees, you know, basically have their own concierge practice. They can get in when they need to. They get longer appointment times. We really work on their preventive health. But the city also ends up with a healthier population. They actually save money on their health care spend in the long run. And then I also have a great job that I love. So I think it sounds it's like really, a win-win. Yeah, it's, it's good. We, I really feel like I, I'm doing good work and I'm appreciated. So that's really important. That's in your so career. important. Well, tell us a little bit about some major lessons that you've learned so far in your career. Um, you know, medicine is such a ever-changing field that uh, you learn a lot and you probably forget more than you ever learn. Um, it, it's hard to keep up sometimes, but I think what I've really learned is that the practice of medicine sometimes is just as much art as it is science. And um, I think I've learned that you really need to listen to your patients, you really need to have empathy. And it, it's so important that that patient has a connection that feels like somebody really cares about them and is doing something. The worst thing a patient can get is, that doctor didn't pay any attention to me, he blew off all my concerns. And you know, it's really easy as a young, you know, hotshot doctor coming out of that big time residency program to think you know everything and you tell the patients, this is what you gotta do. But I think it, it's, a, it's a lot better to, you know, show, show that you care. And uh, that, that's probably more important than being board certified or, you know, doing a high powered residency or anything like that. It's just that you care. You have the best energy, Dr. Mike. I bet that your <laughs> patients really appreciate that from you. Well, thank All you. All right. Next question is about mentorship. Did you have any strong mentors along the way? Oh, by all means. I mean, uh, just at UK as an undergrad, I'd say that uh, Dr. Donald Sands, he was a chemistry professor, uh, a brilliant chemist, but he was also, I think he was vice chancellor for academic affairs. And I was one of the first class of Singletary scholars. So we, I actually got to know him very well through my college career. And he was, you know, incredibly helpful as an advisor. He actually was my chemistry 107 professor too that just kind of happened by chance so I you know I witnessed how somebody could be a great teacher 
you know, a great administrator, but just a super nice man. And, you know, that, that, and then I think in medical school and for the rest of my career, probably my strongest mentor has been Dr. Emery Wilson, who many of us know, he was former Dean of the medical school. I, I, I got a little head start because uh, his daughter, Emily and I were, were actually high school classmates and uh, medical school classmates. So he's a family friend also, but just such a wonderful role model. And he actually, when I finished my residency and decided to come back to Lexington, I, I w didn't originally plan on working for UK because they didn't have any jobs. And, and after talking to him, I, I, I pretty much think he created a job for me and brought me back to UK. So I really owe him a lot. And, wow. And just, uh, truly value his friendship and his guidance through the years. So the data tells us that time and time again, mentorship proves to be some of the most important relationships that we'll have in our career. Yeah. All right, totally next question agree. for you. Um, do you have any special career advice for alumni or students that might be watching? You know, uh, well, if you're considering a career in medicine, um, I, I, what I've kind of touched on before, and, and this goes along with the mentors, I mean, both Dr. Sands and Dr. Wilson are brilliant, brilliant minds, you know, super scientists, you know, technically so competent, but they're just nice people. And I, you know, I know people say nice guys finish last, but I, I, I think that's totally wrong, because I think if you treat people like you expect to be treated, that you want to be treated, that people deserve to be treated, you're going to go a lot farther. And, and as a physician, it's so easy to be a jerk. You know, you, you really do think you're smarter than, than everybody. You, you've been through all the training and all that. And, and I, I do think that being nice really goes a long way. So I just say be nice. Fabulous advice. All right, what about a favorite memory or a favorite class, a favorite professor during your studies at UK? <laughs> well, I can tell you, I, I'm a huge, people that know me know that I live and breathe UK basketball and football. And so I think my best memories, my most vivid, and I wouldn't call them my best memories, uh, but my most vivid memories probably involve uh, being a fan and being a student. I mean, I can't tell you anything about calculus now. I can't tell you any organic chemistry. I can't name the Krebs cycle for you, but I can tell you everything about the UK basketball teams while I was at UK. So, you know, my freshman year was uh, 85, 86, and the seniors were Kenny Walker and Roger Harden. We had Winston Bennett and James Blackman as juniors, Ed Davender, Richard Madison, Rob Locke, Cedric Jenkins were the sophomores. We went 32 and four that year. We should have won the national championship, but they put us in the same bracket as LSU, who we'd already beaten three times. We actually beat Alabama four times, and then we had to play LSU in the regional finals, and we lost. And then my sophomore year, Rex Chapman comes in. We got two years with Rex. Senior year, lowest of the low, almost like this year. It was Eddie Sutton's last year. We had the NCA investigation. We had a losing season, you know, clean house, go on probation. I stayed four more years, first year of medical school. Rick Patino comes in, you know, and, and we're, you know, we go, we go 14 and 14. <laughs> Sophomore year, we're really good, but we're still on probation. Then my third year of medical school, 1992, uh, that's the Unforgettables and Jamal and Ashburn, and we go to Philadelphia, uh, and, and I'm actually at that game. I'm a third year medical student. I'm at the Christian Leitner game. I mean, you talk about the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. We lose. Uh, I have to drive back through the night. My friends drop me off at the hospital because I'm on call the next day for, for OBGYN. And then senior year, we make the final four. So, so I, uh, you know, we lose, but I'm there too. So my, my most vivid memories all do, you know, I mean, I love UK, but, but UK basketball holds a special place in my heart. 
Oh, Dr. Mike, I bet so many of our audience members are nodding and saying, yeah, I remember, <laughs> as they're watching this. Uh, yeah, well, maybe we shouldn't do the career conversation. We need to do a basketball podcast. Oh, that can be our next spinoff for this program. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's also my side gig. I, I'm a photographer, <laughs> you know, and I do all the pictures for KSR and, and whatnot. So it's oh, been that's a, fun. it's a great hobby and, and just my love for UK is what drives it. Yeah. Well, Dr. Mike, thank you so much for sharing more about your story and for being such a valuable member of the UK family. We wish you so much success in the future. Thank you. And to our audience, thank you for joining and have the best day. Bye-bye.